1994. All right, so had you told me when I started at TMJ4 in 1994 that I would be standing here in 2023, I probably would not have believed you and definitely would not have believed it a few years into my career here at Channel 4 because something Something happened where I goofed up pretty bad, and some of you in this room might even remember. It was January of 97. I was one of more than 30 reporters, producers, photojournalists, engineers, and even managers in New Orleans for a week to cover Super Bowl 31. The Packers had not been to a Super Bowl at that time in nearly 30 years, so fan excitement was over the top. After our evening newscasts, one of those nights, I thought I would be in charge and put myself in charge of getting dinner for everybody. We were all together outside the Superdome at that time, and our boss, Jeff Kiernan, Hey, Jeff. <laughs> was there working with our sports team to get ready for a live Packers Super Bowl special that we were going to broadcast from outside the Superdome later that night. Now, this was a huge endeavor at the time. Remember, this is the late 90s. So we still had satellite trucks, long cable runs, no Uber Eats, and we're all starving. So while driving the company minivan to go pick up the food, I remember hearing all kinds of squawking in the back of the minivan. But I was on a mission, so I ignored it. And when I returned with the food, it was pretty late at that time. And there was this odd energy in the air. And coworkers were literally running at me. Like, at me. Not for the food. But because the cameras for the half hour Packers Super Bowl special in New Orleans were literally in the minivan that I had driven off with. <laughs> I had driven off unknowingly with all of them. And that squawking that I heard in the back, that was, that was my coworkers yelling at me through the walkie talkies telling me to turn around because I had driven off with all the cameras. Because I had driven off with some of the walkie talkies too. <laughs> I think I got back about a half hour before airtime. So in the end, the show went on. But the panic in Jeff Kiernan's eyes <laughs> that night still haunts me to this day. <laughs> so my point in sharing this story is that no career that spans decades is perfect. Unless your name is Carol Meekins. <laughs> But we all make mistakes and hopefully learn from them. And I learned never to take charge of the crew dinner again. <laughs> and as for Jeff, I don't know how to thank him enough. Jeff is one of the most important people to have influenced my career. He flew in from Las Vegas to be with all of us tonight. <laughs> You took a chance on a young reporter working in Alaska, hired her to report in Wisconsin, and thousands of stories later, here we are. Few people in TV news have the honor of sitting next to the same person for hours every day for 16 years. I had that honor with Vince Petrano. Anchoring the morning newscast together, I learned so much from Vince. The importance of Malorganite for a human life. That's a good product. That if you pay full price to get into Summerfest, you just didn't try very hard. <laughs> and how to pass out with style when flying with the Blue Angels. <laughs> there is video, you can find it on YouTube. We laughed until it hurt, yet took our responsibilities to heart. Get the facts, get them right. We put our heads down, guided our community through countless big events, 
And when I looked up, 16 wonderful years had passed. Vince was what we in the business call my TV husband. Patrick is my husband in life. We first laid eyes on each other at a Milwaukee Wave game. And he has had the joy of living with me in my sweet <laughs> disposition for 23 years. Job. I would not have survived my crazy morning show hours without him. Thank you for picking up our kids from weight, gymnastics, dance, and baseball practices, for putting them to bed so I could get to sleep, for cleaning the kitchen and doing all the laundry because I was just too tired, for listening to my alarm go off at 1.30 a.m., 1.40 a.m., <laughs> then 1.50 a.m., because I hit snooze three times every morning for 19 years. And for the times that you got up in the middle of the night, too, to dig me out of a snowstorm because the roads had not been plowed yet. Yep. Honey, mm -hmm. honey, wake up. Suck <laughs> <Sorry>, in the driveway. <laughs> Our kids, Madeline and Alex, are here tonight. Gabrielle could not be because she has a big weekend, too, at school in South Carolina. Well, she will be recognized for academic excellence this weekend. All three of our kids, all three of our kids are adults now, and I'm so proud that each of you is conquering the world in your own way. Today, I co anchor the 4 o'clock newscast with Steve Shamras, who was an intern when I started. <laughs> and we have an amazing team around us. My girls, Andrea Williams, Stephanie Brown, yes! <laughs> Covering community stories like no one else. And our queen, producer Brianna Sikowski, <laughs> keeping us all in line. Making the four o'clock newscast. Say it with me, girls. No, please. <laughs> me. <laughs> Another project that I am super proud to be part of is the TMJ4 Community Baby Shower. I pitched this idea to collect baby supplies for local families in need to my young marketing friend and colleague, Greg Schrocknagel. Greg! <laughs> he loved it. And together we got it off the ground for the first time on January 12th of 2003 with live reports in every newscast from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. I was nine months pregnant at the time. Greg was nervous that Gabrielle might come early, maybe the 5 p.m. hit. <laughs> well, Gabrielle waited. She came into the world three days later. And this year we celebrated our 21st annual community baby shower. Yeah, yeah. And Greg, that young marketing colleague, friend of mine, was just named station manager at TMJ4. Congratulations. Yeah. And congratulations to my longtime friend, photojournalist Andrew Triplett. And the other Hall of Fame inductees tonight. Thank you to Milwaukee Press Club for this powerful recognition and for the incredible work that all of you do to promote and keep journalism alive in our community. And you've been doing it since 1885. Well, not Eugene Miller, technically. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you to my colleagues, friends, family, my OG, so many of you. Thank you each for making the time to be with, with us tonight. I truly appreciate it. I love and adore each one of you. Thank you. So she never got to meet her kids. She was born in Korea 
had a difficult upbringing and moved to the United States as a young wife and mother in her late 20s. English was her second language, and TV journalism was actually her dream. That dream did not happen for her, but she sparked my interest in this business. As a young reporter in Alaska in the early 90s, I was trying to get a job in the lower 48, and my mom, without my knowledge, sent my resume tape, those big, clunky, three-quarter inch tapes that we used back then, to three people. Peter Jennings, <laughs> Tom Brokaw, and Dan Rather. <laughs> I was mortified when I found out. I was like, Mom! <laughs> but a copy of that resume tape of mine to Peter Jennings made its way to Jeff Kiernan at TMJ4. She was so proud of every step I took in my career and would have loved tonight. Thank you. <laughs>